Hello and welcome. Today we'll be looking at the Armies of Germany Bolt Action Book Supplement. And later, a spectacular Africa Corps army painted up by a member of Warlord's own customer service team. Armies of Germany is the only army book supplement to be revamped for the second edition of Bolt Action. Being the first, it needed bringing in line with the new rules and is filled with national traits, special units and scenarios, making it a little chunkier than its first edition predecessor. Armies of Germany provides you everything you need to field a German World War II army in bolt action. Through the early war period of 1939 to 1942, German forces enjoyed great success, speeding their way across huge swathes of Europe with their revolutionary blitzkrieg tactics. If early war blitzkrieg lightning war is your thing, then we have an excellent infantry kit and support weapons from this period that showcase the striking uniform of the early German infantrymen. There are theatre selectors in the book that help you recreate the Battle of France or the invasion of Poland. Use pioneer squads and light panzer twos to overwhelm your opponent's forces. As the war progressed, Germany fought on every front, from the icy steppes of the Soviet Union to the dust-choked sands of El Alamein, to the beaches of Normandy and the rubble-strewn streets of Berlin. We also have fantastic plastic winter German and Africa Corps kits. And also the last Levy box set, representing the stragglers and defenders of Nazi Germany's last few days. German industrial infrastructure ultimately struggled to keep up with demand from the front line. However, thanks to a seemingly unquenchable thirst for advancement, German equipment of the era is widely regarded to be technologically superior to that of the Allies, the prime example being the German Big Cats, the Panther and Tiger tanks, which have become quintessential icons of the conflict. The German army was at the forefront of tank development during the war. From the small light tanks of 1939 to the behemoths of the late war, this book includes everything from the Panzer I to the monstrous King Tiger. Many later tanks, including the Panzer IV, have the Tiger Fear special rule. So feared was the Tiger tank that the appearance of any German heavy armor would spook Allied troops, mistakenly thinking that any Panzer IV was a Tiger waiting in ambush. All enemy units that have a line of sight to one or more German vehicles with the Tiger Fear special rule suffer from Tiger Fear. Units suffering from Tiger Fear count as having one extra pin marker on them when taking any order test, except if ordered to fire against a vehicle causing Tiger Fear. If small elite forces pique your interests, why not field an army of Fauchenjäger? These veteran paratroopers are very tough to take down. With their stubborn special rule, they do not give up easily. If forced to check their morale, then they always test on their full morale value, ignoring any pin markers. The Waffen SS. These fanatics often fought to the last man standing, and armed to the teeth with assault rifles, they can be very nasty upon the tabletop. The Gebirgsjägers. These elite mountain troops provide an alternative to the Waffen SS and Fauschenjäger. With a metal squad box available, an army would provide many conversion possibilities for the more adventurous hobbyist. Towards the end of the war, Germany was pooling manpower into a variety of units that saw action on the front lines. With some proving themselves capable, others less so. For better or worse, Armies of Germany allows you to field squads of cheap, inexperienced troops. In the form of the Osttruppen, the naval soldiers of the Kriegsmarine, and the Luftwaffe Field Division.
If you are thinking about putting together a German force, Max from Warlord has some insight into his Africa Corps army. Hi, I'm Max, I work for Warlord Games Customer Service, and today we're going to be talking about my Africa Corps army. Well, I chose the Deutschland Africa Corps, funnily enough, because when I was 14, um, I was getting really into my Airfix and Revel kits, and um, at that point, you know, still on pocket money, so money was tight on the ground, picking up what I could, and uh, a lot of them bigger war games I couldn't afford, but the, the, the tiny little 172s I could afford a ton of, so I went out and bought a bunch of Panzer threes, trucks, everything, even had some <laughs> King Tigers painted up in DAC uniforms, like, stuff you shouldn't get, but, and from there I've always had an eye on them, and after I finished my Soviets, I was like, where should I go next? Let's go back to the original world that got me into World War II. Uh, my favourite unit for this army would definitely be the Pioneer Squad I made. I went out and had a bunch of spare sprues after I purchased the army of the Africa Corps. And I went out and bought the Blitzkrieg Pioneers. Uh, mashed the two kits together so you have the um, guy with the Minesweeper, the guy on his back with the Clippers and of course the Flamethrower. I think it's ended up with a really unique unit. There was a lot of conversion involved. They're not perfect joints but after a little bit of cutting and shutting, really nice kit to work with and I'm really happy with the models. So when I started the army I wasn't sure exactly which to go on so I did some historical research and in the early war they had the bright green uniforms that were slightly different from the mainland Europe ones. Later on they had these nice tan yellow and then towards the end they were almost a brown colour and through the army because I wanted it to represent different eras I've gone for a mix of the kits. The, I'm preparing for a tournament out in Southend and we were encouraged to pick a theatre and I've chose the Battle of Gazala which was in 1942, so you'd see a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new. So we've gone for the sun hats, the helmets and the caps, and both the uniforms. And I think it looks really striking on the tabletop. So, for the next step in the army, I want to move it up to a full Panzer army. So I'm going to get some Panzer II, some more Panzer III, some early Panzer IVs. Probably going to get some trucks, because I don't plan to always use it with the Hanna Mags, because that really pushes it towards the elite force, which sometimes you just want a normal force. Um, but I think for the immediate future, I'm planning on um, changing over to Blood Red Skies for a little bit, have a little break, paint, paint something more small scale, and get a bit lo less lost in the details and the weathering. <laughs>